And we begin our show tonight in Delaware, where new data is revealing how to better tackle criminal justice reform. The data pinpointing which cities and towns most incarcerated people come from. Yeah, 47 ABC's Hannah Cicchini sat down with uh, one of the people who helped put the study together in a Delaware lawmaker. Now, Hannah, what do these numbers tell us? Jordan and Rob, data in this first ever report from the Prison Policy Initiative tells us that incarcerated Delawareans tend to come from communities that are lower income and of higher black and brown populations. Now, with this new information, both advocates and lawmakers say they have a clearer path to battle those inequities. Although the report was heartbreaking, it was unsurprising. Um, I think when we're talking about these type of communities, we're talking about communities that have historically been disinvested in. The data shows that across Delaware, lower income communities with higher black and brown populations are disproportionately home to those incarcerated. Take Seaford, for example. 748 per 100,000 residents are locked up, and it's the same trend for smaller communities like Laurel, with 1,227 per 100,000 residents behind bars. Some of the communities like Seaford and Dover that had some of the highest incarceration rates in the entire state also had dramatically higher uh, poverty rates uh, than many of the other communities throughout the state. And a lot of these communities also have more communities of color, more people of color in them. Delaware State Senator Marie Pinckney says there are many factors lending themselves to those numbers like inequities in health, education and economic opportunity. We as a country have historically not invested in black and brown communities the way that they deserve to be. We have, as a country have historically not invested in lower income communities the way that we the way that they deserve to be. Mike Wessler with Prison Policy Initiative says the way those factors feed mass incarceration or vice versa is a chicken or the egg situation. It's hard to say that mass incarceration caused these problems or that these problems caused mass incarceration. But we know that they're happening at the same time. But while researchers and lawmakers are still digging deeper, what they already know is that data like this can serve as a valuable tool in criminal justice reform. I think that it gets really easy to look at this and blame the person and blame the people who get caught up in the systems. But I also believe that there is responsibility that falls on a state and on a country to make sure that we don't have communities that are suffering in ways that result in higher levels of criminalization. Senator Marie Pinckney also told me today more work in this area is on the horizon. For one, she says lawmakers plan to reintroduce a bill that establishes right to counsel for those with household income below 200 percent of the federal poverty guideline for evictions and other landlord tenant actions. Live in the studio, Hannah Cicchini, 47 ABC, WMDT. Yeah, Hannah, thank you. And to dive deeper into the report, check out Hannah's article on our website. That's 47abc.com. And Prison Policy Initiative also issued a report on Maryland's numbers, which you will also find on a link in that article.